look, games are an amazing form of time travel. You know, they're the best. Th there's a huge appeal to, to, to the notion of, t of time travel being able to sort of, you know, and movies have had that for years. But games, I think, are even better at it. I mean, you play Red Dead and you're riding across the plains on your horse and, and the thunderstorms coming in and the trains going by. And to me, it's a great game from a gameplay standpoint, but, all, but just that feeling of being that, that cowboy riding through, you know, riding through, riding through the West it's extraordinary it is time it's time it's the closest thing we have to time travel and i think it's more that it's the more surprising thing is that why were we fighting in so many you know why, how many more gunfights in office buildings do we need um and how many of those there were how often that was done how many how many literal like how much how much aesthetic literalism do we need in our industry i think that's more the shocking thing and i think it it, it, it betrays a lack of imagination um, a, sh a, a shameful lack of imagination rather than, you know, like saying Bioshock or Red Dead or, or Assassin's Creed is so innovative, innovative. It's, it's more, I think, a, uh, why, why people weren't taking this opportunity. Because when you build a chair, for instance, in a game, you could build a chair that looks just like a chair that you see you're sitting next to in the office, or you can apply a aesthetic choice to it. And it's just as expensive or cheap to, to build something with an aesthetic choice applied to it than just model this thing exactly. Um, so, you know, unlike the film industry where you can go out, where it's so much cheaper to go out and buy, you know, 500 chairs from the chair factory than it is to go c construct a bunch of stuff, because we have to construct everything. So, you know, there's no excuse. Um, and I think it's mostly, you know, you're seeing a lot of talented people feeling their oats and um, starting to express themselves, you know, it, it use, leveraging these time periods that, and this kind of imagination. The, the gaming industry changes so fast. I think anybody who, we're, we're so young as an industry, you know, I think that anybody, and, and it's so unstable as an industry to some degree. I think if anybody looks, you know, tries to look 20 years down the road or even 10 years down the road, um, it's really hard to imagine. I think that the you know, th there are some obvious trends in terms of um, that, you know, playing games, sort of how you want to play them, you know, and where you want to play them, you know, the diversity of platforms is, is, is surprisingly increasing. I think most people thought it would be a narrowing. Um, that's, but, but, but that's, but that's d increasing the, um, boy, you know, I'm really, like, I'm so focused right now on what we're doing that it's kind of even hard to imagine, because if you allow yourself past a window of a couple of years, I think you start kidding yourself. Um, so I have some really solid ideas, and they're in this product about where it's sort of you know, and we're in a corner, we're in a certain corner of the industry. You have you know, social games, and you've got um, casual games, and you've got handheld games, and you've got iPhone games, and then you have these sort of you know, big AAA console games, sort of like the blockbuster, you know, the summer blockbusters uh, of the gaming industry. And I think I have a really good sense of how that is going to evolve in the next couple of years, you know, next two, three years, because that's what, sort of what the space we're thinking of. And a lot of that's going to be expressed in some things we're going to be talking about down the road with this product. I think there's a, a, a good trend in the industry that, devel that developers and publishers are starting to realize that the, um, the brands we have, the, you know, the, the, the franchises, the, these, um, these worlds we create have ex can have expression in a lot of different ways. Um, you know, they can have expression in, you know, the games, the big games we make, they can have expression in, you know, using a lot of comic books and a lot of, um, a lot of, um, novels and things like that. Um, but you also see these, 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 you know, what I think of as sort of brand extensions, you know, these things that you have on XBLA, like, you know, and sometimes the brand extensions are better than the actual, you know, the triple, the big, the big budget games that are made. And we're, um, and we're definitely thinking about that. Um, on this product um, and about you know the, the bio and Bioshock in general, um, because I think a you know f there's other places to play with the ideas that aren't as sort of like you know big five year commitments and and game styles. Look, there's very valid game styles. You know, you have um, you know you have you know whether it's buying a Commando or um, or you know pub games with 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 Fable Two, things that feel like that world that that are part of that world but are a um, but expressed in a different way. And I think those are equally valid. And, and I think, I, I mean, I love them. I love playing them. A any particular trend, any particular technology trend, whether it's multiplayer or 3D, it's something I tend to think about, you know, is it something that's 
a part of this product, you know, rather than uh, it being a marketing imperative or, you know, or, or financial imperative. Because at the end of the day, if you chase marketing imperatives or financial imperatives, you're never going to catch them. Um, you know, I, I remember when I was, a, um, I was, when I was a, um, a screenwriter, somebody said to me, well, why don't you write something more commercial? And I said, well, if I knew what that was, you know, I'd do it. Nobody, you know, I, I was never interested in being, a, you know, working in a garret somewhere, a penniless, you know, writer working in a garret. But I think the problem is, is that people who pursue things strictly because it feels like there's money there never end up catching that money, and they end up and they end up always compromising what they're doing creatively. So we tend to, not because we're so, you know, we're not you know, we're not immune to the charms of money. It's more about that um, we I think we're wise enough to realize that if you chase that, you're not going to get it. You have to just do what you think is cool. Let me say this to the camera. If you're a game developer and you don't play games, go become a pharmacist or something else because you're in the wrong industry. Um, you got to play games. If you, you, there is so much to learn. I mean, I just dropped last week 140 bucks on Frontierville on like buying cows or whatever I was buying, you know, and which is a cool game. I mean, Brian Reynolds designed Frontierville, who, who you know, um, um, Civilization II and, and, and Rise of Nations. So there's in, I knew there'd be interesting ideas there because Brian's a really smart guy and there are interesting ideas. There's not a game I would, it's not like the kind of games we make, but it's are interesting ideas there. You know, I play everything, everything, even terrible games, there's great stuff to learn from. You just, it, 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 it's just, it's inconceivable to me that you'd be a game developer and not play games. It's just inconceivable. Um, I, 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 just, I, can't, I can't even imagine why you wouldn't, or why you wouldn't want to.